Biomes are large areas of the environment that are classified by their vegetation, soil, climate, and their wildlife, all of which are controlled by their temperatures and the precipitation. Today, we're going to talk about deserts. Deserts occur between 15 and 35 degrees latitude and include the Mojave, Sonoran, the Sahara, and Gobi, just to name a few. Deserts, as you know, are the hottest and driest of all the biomes. Temperatures in the day can reach over 100 degrees, and the nights can dip below freezing. And they only receive 10 or less inches of rain a year. But water is the essence of life. So living in the desert, protecting what little of this precious resource is available, builds some of the toughest organisms on Earth. Plants are sparse in the desert and are typically low-growing trees or shrubs that have adapted to this hot and dry environment. Most plants in this biome have leaves that are responsible for conserving most of their water. Just like you, plants breathe, in a sense. They have special organs called stomata on their leaves that allow them to breathe. They breathe in carbon dioxide to go through photosynthesis. Desert plants have adapted to open these pores at night, when it's cooler, so less water would be leaked out. Their leaves also tend to be small and have thick outer layer called the cuticle or a waxy layer to prevent water loss. In cactus species, the leaves are modified into spines. These protect the precious water inside the plant from any animals that might steal or eat the cactus. These plants use their precious resources to produce flowers and fruits. These fruits are full of the seeds of the next generation of cactus and are a crucial food source for many animals of the desert. The most recognizable cactus is the Soharo. These cacti are the largest cactus species in North America and can live up to 200 years old. A 10 year old plant might only be one and a half inches tall, but over their life, they can reach 60 feet. These desert plants are known as a keystone species meaning they serve a major role in the life of the ecosystem. They not only produce flowers for pollinators and fruit for animals to eat, but also serve as nesting sites for many birds. In fact, over a hundred animals, including insects, make use of these desert giants. Animals also need to adapt to be able to survive the harsh temperatures and the arid conditions of the deserts. During the hot days, it is scarce to see any animals out and about. Between the scorching sun from above, the sands below can reach 80 degrees Celsius. That's 176 degrees Fahrenheit. It's at night that the desert becomes active. Most desert animals have adapted to be nocturnal or come out at night to avoid the dangerous temperatures during the day. Insects play key roles in all ecosystems and deserts aren't any different. Insects that depend on plants for food are of the primary consumer's trophic level. And all of these insects become food for other desert dwellers like lizards and birds. Most animals that live in the desert get all of the moisture they need from their diet. Just like you and me, all the animals of the desert have water inside them. So when a beetle, cricket, bee, or any other insect is eaten by another, that water is transferred to the predator. Now that doesn't mean that when it does rain and forms pools of water, these animals don't take advantage of a long full sip of water. A prime example is the Namib Desert Beetle. This beetle points its body into the morning fog and collects water droplets onto its back. With its body angled up, the droplets roll down its wing covers and into its mouth. The thorny devil lizard also can do this with morning dew, and these reptiles can move the drops of water to its mouth by way of its circulatory system near its skin. They can even stand in water and bring it to its mouth. How's that for innovation? 
Deserts are perfect environments for animals like reptiles. Reptiles are cold-blooded, or ectothermic, meaning they regulate their body temperature with their environment. If a reptile is cold, then they will be slower than if they are in a warmer environment like a desert. Warm deserts are suitable for Gia monsters, sidewinders, tortoises, and all kinds of reptiles, all perfectly adapted for this hot, dry environment. Many of the larger animals of the deserts also have evolved ad adaptations for survival in these harsh conditions. Many large mammals like camels and the Arabian oryx have light-colored hair. These light colors help reflect the sunlight off of them instead of absorb the heat. But what about the Arabian oryx's black legs? Well, they're used to absorb the early morning sunlight to help warm the animal after the cold nights of the desert. A cute addition to the desert lineup is the fennec fox. These small mammals also have unique adaptations for living in the desert. And the fox's most obvious trait, its ears, is one of them. These massive ears help detect the smallest of sounds even under the sand as its prey scurries beneath the sand. But that's not the only purpose they serve. Those giant ears have large amounts of capillaries within them, and when blood goes through them, excess heat is lost to the environment, cooling the animal down. That's a real head turner. Probably the most recognizable desert animal is the camel. Camels are built for the desert. From their soft, wide hooves, which help them walk across the loose sands, to their humps. No, they don't store water in there. Like a lot of people say, they store fat in their humps instead, which allows them to go long periods without eating. The desert is truly a harsh environment. Cold nights, extreme heat in the days, lack of water and food, but the animals that call this place home are capable of living where few can. Adaptations to take advantage of what little water is available. Getting the moisture that they need just through their diet. Going long periods without eating. Hair and bodies to cope with the extreme temperature changes. These organisms are some of the toughest on the planet.